day and welcome to yet another season in the Class Clown series, season two. Season two. IELTS edition. My name is Sarah, and at the back of the camera we have Sina, who has many years of experience in the IELTS industry, teaching many students from different parts of the world. And to my right we have Sam, who is another expert in the IELTS industry. And if you didn't know, Sam has his own channel called Fast Track ESL. So if you want any tips, tricks, or advice on test prep, visit his channel. Awesome, thank you, sir. Oh, it's great to be here. Um, little known fact, Sarah here is an official IELTS examiner. That is right. And she is also a test prep expert. Mm -hmm. So we thought it would be a great idea for us to do a flipped interview, a flipped IELTS interview today, where we will role play all the three parts of the IELTS speaking test to give you guys an idea of what a model answer looks like. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I'll be playing the examiner, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna try to make this as genuine as possible and as close to the real IELTS exam as possible. Mm -hmm. Once we're done, we'll also be going through some essential tips and strategies, mm -hmm. and we'll be commenting on uh, Sarah's performance as a native speaker of English. Mm -hmm. All right, Sarah. So, ready when you are. I'm ready when you are. All righty. All right. Okay. Action. So, uh, normally the IELTS exam begins with a short warm-up mm -hmm. where uh, the examiner will ask for your ID. They will ID check you and they'll ask you a few questions just to get you ready for the actual exam. The actual exam begins once the examiner starts recording. So, they have a recording device and they start by saying, this is the IELTS exam for candidate Sarah Lynn. Mm -hmm. Today's date is, they'll talk about, the, they'll mention the date, mm -hmm. and the test center is Toronto, Ontario. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's begin. Sure. Now, in this far, first part of the test, I want to ask you a couple of questions about yourself. Sure. Let's begin by talking about television programs. Mm. What's your t favorite TV program or TV show? All right, well, my favorite TV program at the moment is on Netflix, and uh, the name of the program is Girlfriends. I'm not sure if you've heard of that TV show. It's kind of like an old school sitcom uh, with five uh, women, and they basically go through their daily problems, their struggles, their celebrations. And yep, yeah, so that's the sitcom I'm watching now. Okay, are there any TV shows you don't like watching? Hmm. I would say I try to stay away from scary thrillers, anything that's too uh, bloody or gory. So maybe something like The Walking Dead. It does take me a while to get into those TV shows. Okay. Do you think you'll watch more or less TV in the future? Mm. Uh, because I'm thinking about my health and my productivity a lot these days, I think taking out a few TV shows from my daily routine would be best, so I'd be watching less TV in the future. Okay. And are there any television programs that you would recommend to ESL students? <gasps> oh. Well, I know a lot of ESL students like to watch Friends, like myself, as I am an ESL student. Um, I think also shows like Family Matters and Full House are good shows to start with because these are older shows, but I think if an ESL student plans to speak English in the future with native English speakers, touching on those shows might bring up some like good memories for them. So they also speak English very slowly and very well. Great. Mm -hmm. Now, in this part of the test, I'm going to give you a card. Okay. On this card, there are some questions. All right. I want you to think about these questions for one minute. Okay. And then I'm going to ask you to talk about it for two minutes. All right. So I want you to describe a successful business person that you know about. Here's your cue card. Okay. And here's a pad for you to take notes on. Perfect. You have one minute to prepare. Kimberly, friend from 
high school. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of business does this person have? So it's a food business and it's very humanitarian and not nonprofit. That's a good word I could use to describe this business for vocabulary. How did they get started? Um, simple or small beginnings. <sighs> simple, small beginnings. Uh, not okay, too so that's one minute. Oh my goodness. So now I want this is speak. hard. Okay. That's all right. I want you to talk about this topic for two minutes. Please continue speaking until I tell you to stop. Okay. And don't worry if I stop you. Okay. So, uh, the person I'm going to talk about right now is someone named Alice. And she's a girl I knew from my high school days. I didn't keep in touch with her on a personal level. But through social media, I see that she's started a very... Um, humanitarian business so it's basically food uh, she it's not that she sells food but um, her organization makes food available in this kind of standalone fridge I know that sounds weird but it's a standalone fridge where people can bring groceries that they're not using put it in that fridge and if somebody happens to need something like say apples they can actually go to that fridge and take the apples, but they have to leave something of their own. I think that's a great idea. Um, so the type of business is, uh, I wouldn't even say food sales because it's a nonprofit organization, which means she doesn't make any money from it, but it does have a humanitarian angle. Uh, how they got started, honestly, I can't, can't say much about that because I didn't keep in touch with her but through social media I've been following her and yes I would follow in her footsteps because I too want to do something for humanity something that's charitable and um, something innovative because I think that business idea was very innovative and there's a very big functional value to it too right like say for example right now if I wanted to make a pie but I didn't have apples, I could pop over, see if there are apples there, and leave some celery, you know? And then maybe someone else needs celery, and then they could just go to the same place, take the celery, and leave a box of jello. So that would be what I would do. And I think other people should also follow in such virtuous footsteps themselves, because it would just lead to a bigger and better world. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> now, you talked about um, a friend of yours who owns a business. Yes. Now, in this third part, I'd like to ask you one or two more general questions. Okay. What occupations are trending right now in your country? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, let me think. I would say that very trendy jobs these days are in social media. Also, a lot of online businesses are good to work for. And um, it's just more convenient because in North America, we have a big focus on work-life balance. Uh, we like to work hard, but we also like to play hard too and keep a kind of healthy lifestyle. So I would say online work helps us to be remote, right? We can stay at our house. If we're traveling to another country, we can still work for that same company. So, yep, I'd say social media, which is also online, and other companies are bringing their business online. So online occupations are the way to go. Very interesting. Um, who do you think uh, makes a better professional counselor, teachers or parents? I would definitely say that uh, teachers make better professional counselors. Uh, the key word would be professional because, of course, parents tend to be subjective uh, and emotional in their response to children. So teachers would, on the other hand, be objective and they know their students in a different way, right? It's a little more formal, but 
if they care about their students, they have that kind of care, love, and sympathy for their students as well. But they're coming from a more objective place. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you say financial compensation is your top priority when job searching? I would say no, because if that were the case, I would be a doctor right now, <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, I, yeah, so financial compensation is always good because we need to live, you know, pay rent, go to the groceries, uh, have a personal life with entertainment or, you know, being social. But other than that, I would say I need to be happy at my job in order to be successful. Uh huh. Now in terms of work-life balance, would you say the days of working long hours and taking less holidays are a thing of the past? I would say for North America, yes, but I do have some experience working abroad uh, in parts of Asia and also in parts of Europe. So for those cultures, I don't think that's a thing of the past. They still tend to overwork themselves. And uh, for North American people, we try to achieve work-life balance, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to say no to that one. It's not a thing of the past. Okay. And how will having a poor work-life balance affect our society in the future? Hmm. I would say that... It would have the same effect as now because, as I mentioned before, a lot of countries still have that mentality. But uh, if we continue to do this into the future, I think humanity will be less happy and less free to pursue their natural interests. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're this welcome. is the end of the IELTS speaking test. Wow. And scene. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. Wow. So, okay. Sarah, how was it? Well, you seem definitely calm, cool, and collected. <laughs> but, um, but you weren't? I wasn't. I found myself struggling to uh, think of the right person for mm -hmm. part two, right. for mm -hmm. the part two turn. So, um, Which I actually want to comment on. Okay. One of the things that um, we often ask students to do in mm -hmm. prep courses is not to be very picky when it comes to choosing oh. what they want to talk about mm -hmm. because that's not going to determine your score. It's mm -hmm. how you speak at length is right. what mm -hmm. really matters. So okay. I often tell my students, just go with the first thing that pops into your head. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't be too picky. You're, I'm, I know if, if I gave you more time, you probably would have come up with, a, even, with an even better That's um, true. example mm -hmm. to go with. But then just go with the first thing that pops Especially into your head. Especially proper nouns, right? Like names of people. It's not important if it's Kimberly or Jack or whatever, right. right? In fact, I put down Kimberly, but actually her name was is Alice. So yeah, I, <laughs> I corrected myself because it came to my mind. Mm -hmm. But another difficulty I think for um, students taking the IELTS exam is just the fact that you can't ask questions to right. the examiner. So right. you see my natural response was to ask a question but they'll most likely say nope we can't answer that for you. Sometimes right? they won't even react. Yeah. And that, that tends to be off for a lot yeah. of, yeah, yeah. because mm -hmm. it's in the protocol yeah. that the examiner isn't supposed to interact mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the candidate in parts one uh, or three. Yeah. Like part two, obviously not. Mm -hmm. But, um, and a lot of students do fall into that trap Yes. And it kind of gives you this negative vibe because you expect this person to That's be friendly, true. which mm -hmm. they are, but they are professionals yeah. and they're doing their job and they're not supposed to really interact. Yeah. And I noticed that in part one, you did ask me a question. Oh. But I was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so. I probably felt that, but... Um... So I hope I didn't come off as being unfriendly. <laughs> no, no, doing never my that. Job. No, no, no. I was only doing my job. <laughs> Um, I have a few comments to share with you. Okay. All right, so we can start from the very beginning. In part one, you um, I don't know if you noticed, but Sarah used some very nice collocations, mm -hmm. words that go together. So as it a native speaker, speaker. Yes, yes. that does help. Yeah. yeah. So as a native speaker, as a native speaker, these things come naturally mm -hmm. to Sarah. But for you, uh, language learners or people who are preparing for the IELTS, it would be a good idea to prepare these beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, so Sarah used 
for example, bl- uh, bloody and gory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two words that go together to describe a particular genre of television. Mm-hmm. An excellent collocation. Yes. And um, definitely the use of these collocations will not go unnoticed by the examiner. For sure. Uh, she also used um, very great verbs like touching on. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a less frequent verb. It's a very expressive verb, but it's not something that the average language learner would use. Mm-hmm. Um, but part three, I think, is probably the part where we really need to talk about the strategies oh. and, and what you did. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so interested. Brace yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I've been bracing myself, but okay. So, <laughs> strategy number one. You think one. I was never an examiner. Never before, yeah. But you've never been an IELTS candidate. That's very true. Yes. Oh, how the tables have turned. And now Flip I'm in the flipped. hot seat. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. So, again, I don't know if you noticed, but in part three, Sarah uh, began some of her answers by commenting on the question. She was using this as a strategy to think about what she was going to say. Do you remember doing that? So you said, let me think. That's an interesting question. Yes. So she Mm -hmm. didn't just stare blankly into the void. It's good to fill the time. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. So excellent strategy there. Thank you. She also gave very good reasons for her opinions. Mm-hmm. So she, um, the length of the average response in part three was much longer than mm. parts one, uh, in, uh, than, than the average question in part one. So that's because she was expanding um, on the answer and she was uh, giving reasons mm-hmm. for her opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's great to have longer and more developed answers. Uh, I also like the sense of humor. Oh, and that always me? helps. Me, sense of humor. Now, how did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. Class how did that happen? Well, that's just strange to me. <laughs> so, sense of humor definitely works to your advantage, mm-hmm. and uh, I would strongly recommend it. Uh, if controlled, you're funny. <laughs> controlled, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, I for some of your answers in part three you had a wrap-up sentence at the end so you you explained everything and then you said so no i do i wouldn't say that Mm -hmm. but i wouldn't recommend this for the average uh language uh learner taking the test oh why not because it's always very important to make your opinion very clear at the very beginning so and then proceed to um uh, elaborate and give reasons. Mm. So a uh, wrap up is not really necessary. A wrap up would be a nice addition. Mm-hmm. So you've clearly expressed your opinion, mm-hmm. you've explained your reasons, and then now you are recapping okay. by just saying, so yes, I agree, right? Mm-hmm. But then to begin explaining only to give your opinion at the end, that mm-hmm. might be a little too risky for oh. the average language learner. Yeah. Okay. For the, yeah, okay. yeah, that's true. I see, I see. And All also, right. can I add, as a uh, speaking examiner, mm-hmm. uh, in part one, I think it's important to remember not to give a lengthy answer, as some students mm-hmm. want to do. They start right off the bat, mm-hmm. and for an examiner, it's off-putting because right. we need to get through part one actually quite quickly. Mm-hmm. So save your long answers for part three because that's when the examiner is expecting it. Awesome. That's, that's an amazing uh, piece of advice. Yeah. yeah. It really works well. And also, mm-hmm. uh, the examiner will cut you off if you're speaking uh, at length in mm-hmm. part one. Yes. So that's not really uh, a, a problem. Mm-hmm. Like Sarah said, uh, the examiner's trying to make sure that they get all the questions in mm-hmm. before it's time for So don't time. panic. Don't panic. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Beautiful. Thank you Perfect. so much, guys. Mm-hmm. There are nine more episodes to come. So yes, please nine stay more tuned. episodes. And we're happy to bring all this wonderful information to you. Thank you, Sam. See you in another episode. Mm-hmm. And thank you again, Sina, for being a wonderful person in general. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, see you soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.